What's up guys, welcome back. It has been quite some time since I've uploaded a new video to my YouTube channel. So I figured it's probably about that time to give you guys an update on what's going on with the build. And we're back, finally. It's definitely been quite a while. You know, I see you guys messaging me in the comments all the time. You know, when are we gonna get a new video in the build series? When's the car gonna be done? I can't tell you for sure when this car is gonna be finished, but at the very least, I had to get a new video up for you guys. You know, with everything going on in this crazy world the last couple of years, I work full time, so it doesn't really leave a whole lot of time left over to work on the race car, but I've been plugging away and getting things done. And uh, unfortunately, I already went ahead and filmed three build videos on everything I've been doing in the car the last year, year and a half. And when I went to go edit that first video just a couple weeks back, all of the footage was corrupt, all three videos gone, just like that. Which is a huge shame because I put a lot of hard work into filming these videos and now I can't even show you what I did. So at the very least, I figured I'd give you a little walk around tour, build update on what I've been up to, maybe give you a couple Easter eggs on what else is going on with the car, and uh, we'll go from there. So here is the version two WRC build update. All right, so here we go. As you can see, the car is fully stripped back down. No engine, no gearbox, no subframe, no suspension, nothing. Everything's completely gutted, stripped back down to bare metal in some spots, definitely needs some new paint. No windshield, no doors, no suspension, completely gutted right back down to bare bones. And this was never supposed to happen. I had the car fully together at the end of 2019, and my only plan at that point was to basically work on the wiring loom, some electronics and a couple other things. And this just goes to show you how crazy I am and how messed up I am with my OCD, trying to perfect this WRC build. And this is why it is now called the WRC version two build, because I'm changing almost everything on the car. I'm crazy, right? So this all started when a friend of mine, uh, Jay from Race3 Motorsports, he specializes in 3D scanning and 3D engineering. And he came by, we 3D scanned my engine bay and um, figuring some things out with my new radiator and a couple other things I'm doing with the car, I realized that the front rad support was actually too wide, so I had to change it up. So what did I do? I decided to build the rad support to look almost identical to the WRC S10 S11 chassis which has, it's basically pushed in from where my uh, rad support met with the frame rail before. It's got a bulge here that goes around the headlight and uh, it just basically pushes everything in to allow more room in this area. You know, when I did the version one build, specifically on the engine bay with the rad supports, these wheel tubs and all that kind of stuff, I did that way back in 2015. And I can tell you way back then, I had no plan of doing any of this stuff to the car. I just wanted to have, you know, some cool stuff under the hood, the wheel tops and the custom strut towers and all that kind of stuff. And at this point, I also didn't have access to the photos, the library of photos that I've gathered over the last few years. I have pictures of every square inch of legit WRC cars where I've been able to actually figure these things out and piece everything together and make it all work. So going back to the rad support, I also deleted the hole here where my arrow catch hood pins used to attach. I'm going over to this other hole here because I'm gonna be changing the hood pins, of course. And uh, up here on the front frame rail, it used to have the big wide bracket from the factory and I used that to attach the bash bar while well, I basically cut that off and welded a plate to the front, welded these two studs onto the front, basically just shrunk everything down, moved it all up. Uh, and that's where the bash bar attaches. Speaking of the bash bar, I know I get a lot of compliments from you guys all the time and a lot of people even want me to build them a bash bar or know where to buy it from. Well, this is gonna break a lot of your hearts because here's what the bash bar looks like now. Fully stripped down, bare metal, powder coat's gone. It's completely cut. This was the main tube that attached to the front of the car. And then this is the lower section that wrapped into the bumper. Uh, I'm redesigning the entire bash bar setup and uh, one of the other things for this version two build. Uh, going back into the engine bay, up here I used to have my radium dual catch can set up installed. There was a few holes here that I had to uh, weld shut 
And then you can see here now that I've got a really big hole now with these other three holes. There's gonna be a power steering cooler that's gonna be mounted over there. You can see some other body work here where my uh, damper reservoirs used to mount. I used to mount with two holes and I shaved those holes and drilled these two new holes. So the reservoirs are still gonna be in the same spot. I'm just changing the way it mounts to the tub. Here you can see this custom bracket that I made and welded. And that is gonna be for a WRC hood stay or bonnet stay. Uh, Bakimono is actually where I'm gonna be getting it from and he makes these really nice titanium ones, identical to what uh, ProDrive did with the WRC cars. So it's gonna have uh, the hood stay to hold the hood up or bonnet up. Um, another thing I did over here is where the brake fluid reservoirs used to attach. I used to have these brackets here. I've welded those shut. They still need a little bit of body work, but you can see I've drilled some new holes. So the fluid reservoirs are still gonna be mounted on the front wheel tub. But the reason being is I'm now switching to AP racing fluid reservoirs and uh, wanted to keep the setup a lot cleaner, more similar to what the WRC cars had. Now, the S11s, S12s didn't have the fluid reservoirs mounted here. They had them mounted on a custom tank that was mounted on the roll cage inside the car. I believe it was the S7, S8, uh, which would be the bug eye that had the fluid reservoirs mounted up here. So that's the style I'm going with. So if if you guys haven't noticed, even though my car is technically an S11 body style on the front, I like to mix and match certain things from the different eras from whatever I like and I think looks cool, you know, because even the back end of my car is technically an S12. I've got 2006 taillights, I've got the roof spoiler on the back, so it's an S12 back end. So the car's kind of a mix and match of different eras of the WRC cars from the S7 all the way to the S12. So also looking up here, what else can I show you? we go up here to the firewall, let's start with the elephant in the room and that is the new WRC pitch mount. So the factory pitch mount um, attaches to the car and then there's also an additional plate that covers all of this. Uh, so I deleted the plate and custom made this new bracket. But uh, what it does is it changes the mounting position of the pitch mount higher up on the firewall the factory one used to mount way down here, so this is about four inches higher up, which is gonna change the angle where the pitch mount attaches to the top of the gearbox, just applying more pressure and making everything a lot more firm. I also, I've added some new holes, deleted some holes. Here you can see these three holes. This one I had to shrink, but these are all for the auto sport connectors. So this big one here is gonna be for my power loom, which is gonna supply all the wiring through the firewall for the headlights, the fans, all that kind of stuff. This one is gonna be the main engine sensor loom. Obviously all the wiring going to the engine sensors. And then this little one right here is gonna be the main power for the starter motor. So three auto sport connectors going into the firewall. I've also reinforced the steering column plate here because I'm gonna be adding an aftermarket steering column now. So this is where the bushing attaches and everything's a lot, a lot more firm now. There's gonna be no movement in the firewall compared to the OEM firewall. Also deleted some holes from the previous heater system on the firewall. Drilled a couple new holes up here. I'm not gonna tell you what that one is. You can figure out what that one is if you know what you're looking at. This one here, another auto sport connector. That is gonna be the connector which will pass the wiring through for the lamp pod if I ever get it installed on the car. Oh, also one more thing that I've done, down here where this front frame rail support goes, this piece actually used to come around here and wrap all the way around. And what they did on the WRC cars I noticed after really looking hard at some photos, they actually cut it and shorten it. Now, Driver's side, either way you get some weight savings, which is a bonus, but on the passenger side, you'll see this huge hump in the firewall. And by shortening this passenger side, you know, typically the downpipe coming off the turbo would be over here. Well, now you've got all this extra room to mount the downpipe or have things move around. So it's gonna make fitment of my new turbo setup and everything going on in the engine bay a lot cleaner and a lot more room to play around with uh, fitment. So that should do it for the engine bay. Let's come around here to the front left suspension area. So, do you notice anything missing? 
That would be the giant frame mount for the U-brace. I deleted that as well as the pinch weld that ran along the entire bottom of the frame rail. And I also C-notched the frame rail in this section here. You know, I'm running the car in a tarmac setup at the moment. And the car is so low that a couple times when I had the car on the road in 2019, I noticed that the axle shaft had just barely made contact with the pinch weld. So looking at some photos again of what the WRC cars and ProDrive had done, a lot of the cars had the front frame rails notched out. And uh, basically what that entitled was, after I drilled the hole, there's actually three or four different layers of metal in this frame rail. So I welded all of those back together and then welded this piece of tube in and uh, welded the entire seams back together along the pinch welds. All right, here you can see some fresh solid metal welded to the inside of the wheel tub. This is almost identical again to what the WRC cars had. And they run a different lower control arm mounting system, but this basically just stiffens up the entire area where the lower control arms mount. There should be zero movement. Everything should be very solid and stiff for the lower control arms. I removed some of the factory metal that was underneath here, welded in some heavier gauge steel, and uh, everything's basically plated and reinforced. And you'll see the metal even continues all the way underneath and is fully plated uh, both on the front part of the wheel tub and on the bottom side. I'll show you more of what's going on underneath the car, but we'll come back to that. So before we go inside the car, here's uh, something a little interesting. Everything you see in this box, more scrap metal, all of this I removed off the car this time around. This doesn't include any of the metal I removed when I did the roll cage a few years back or any other metal I removed off the car. This is what I've removed just this time around. So here's some of the metal mounts that were on the firewall. Pretty heavy gauge steel. Factory pitch mount. Uh, here's where the U-brace mounts were. Pinch welts. A lot of weight. I'd say that box is at least 40 to 50 pounds. It's pretty heavy. So really looking forward to getting the car on the scale this time around. So let's jump into the interior of the car because clearly there's lots going on inside here too. And yeah, there's no doors on the car as I already mentioned. All right, so moving into the inside of the car, you can see here that I've welded in a custom WRC steering column mount. Now this is almost identical to what the, I think straight from S7 all the way to the S12 had this exact same mount. It is slightly different in shape just because where I have my dash bar welded in, it's actually sitting a little bit lower than where the WRC cars had it. So I had to change the design a little bit. This took a lot of work to design this mount. I think I had an entire eight hours just trying to make the template. Uh, everything's fully dimple dyed. Its support basically connects the steering column mount to the dash bar, to the cowling firewall support, even this roll cage tube here. So it's really, really firm. Steering column is gonna have zero play in it whatsoever. So the WRC cars, when they mount the steering column to the bracket, they actually use a two piece aluminum block that has a circle hole in the center. The column goes through that and then it bolts into the steering column mount with two bolts on either side. And then they can use shims to adjust the height of the steering column. Now my aftermarket column that I'm using has a different type of bracket. So it's basically got a notch up here in the front and then I machined these metal mounting tabs on. And basically I have a large bolt that will run through the center of here. There's two aluminum spacers between the steering column bracket. And then this end here is threaded and the bolt goes into there. And then I was just worried because I didn't want just one bolt going in, just if there was ever any side to side movement. So this is threaded with an even larger thread size on this side. So once the bolt goes all the way through, you can then put a grub screw in and that fully locks the bolt in and there's zero movement for anything to move around. Another thing that's going on up here is these roll cage gussets that I added. This is uh, again, very similar to what the WRC cars had. This was a change they had done, I think on either the S10, definitely the S11, S12, S12B had this modification done to their roll cage. And obviously it's just gonna make everything a little bit more firm. Now it's not identical to what the WRC cars had because I've noticed there's a few differences between my roll cage made by custom cages and the WRC Pro Drive cage. And again, because my dash bar is mounted a little bit lower uh, and also the WRC roll cage A-pillar bars were a little bit further out. So this piece here wasn't necessarily on the downside here, uh, inside here, I don't know how to explain it, but basically because of that, this gusset that I made had to have a bit of a curvature on the inside here 
to follow the shape of the A-pillar bar to meet the dash bar here. But everything turned out pretty good. I'll show you the back side. And you can see the back side here, it's welded along the A-pillar bar, part of the roll cage tubes, these tubes up here and up around the dash bar. Dimple died to lighten it up a little bit, strengthen it, and uh, that's it. So we got one on this side, and then there's also the one on the passenger side as well. Going back to the WRC pitch mount that I did on the firewall, this is another thing that WRC cars have, is where they have this bracket that is welded to the back of the firewall. Now I think this doubled for two things. Obviously this is gonna reinforce the back of the pitch mount, which is directly behind that. So you've got a lot of force pushing on the backside, but I think they had some type of a sensor um, from some of the photos I've been looking at. I don't know exactly what it was, but they had some type of a big sensor that mounted inside this hole here. Um, so again, I don't know if it was part for that or if it's just to reinforce the pitch mount, but either way, uh, I have also replicated that. Another thing I've done up here, you can see these mounts. Uh, this was part of all of this bracketry that used to be here from the factory. This is where the center console screws into, but there was all this additional plating and everything that was up here. Uh, and I just deleted everything just to get some little bit more weight savings out of it. And uh, all I needed was the mounts for the center console. The rest of it was all useless, so got rid of that. And now we can see that I have raised the transmission tunnel from the front all the way to the back. This is also for mounting the X-shift sequential shifter. Uh, so I deleted the, the factory hole where the shifter used to be, deleted all the holes. This bolts into here now. It's actually a little bit further back. And um, I've got a revision here for where my handbrake's gonna mount. I still need to drill the holes and figure out everything for how I'm gonna mount the handbrake up here. But here you can see everything's fully welded up and uh, lifted up a little bit higher. Here in the back of the car, I've got two additional mounts that I have welded in for mounting. Uh, you'll have to wait and see, but additional mounts welded to the back of the car here. And then here you can see I've even welded in same additional gusseting because this lower door bar didn't come in contact with the B pillar. So I made these custom brackets, put some dimple dyed holes into it, and now it's fully secured and attached to the B pillar just to stiffen everything up a little bit better. Uh, here's, a, here's a bonus for you if, uh, if you don't know, as I think a lot of people don't. But if you can see that signature right there, that is Chris Atkinson, uh, former Subaru WRC rally driver, uh, actually sat in the car and signed the roof back in 2019 at the Canadian round of World Rallycross. Super awesome to have that opportunity. Now hopefully one day I can get Petter Solberg to sit in the car and uh, I think that'd be pretty cool. So, so another thing that I've done up here where the factory door sill cover would mount, uh, I've welded these holes shut individually. This is identical to how the ProDrive WRC cars were. So figured that's another thing I've got to match and make it look identical. Let's go over to the passenger side. Now, over here on the right side of the car, you can see this custom bracket that I made and is welded in. And this is gonna be for the wiring loom, uh, the main loom that's gonna be going to the back end of the car. So for everything from the fuel pumps to the tail lights and whatever else needs wiring in the back of the car uh, is gonna be through another auto sport connector, which will mount directly to this bracket. The loom will come up here between the roll cage Mount onto this, and then this way you can split, and that one will run to the rear of the car. And keeping with the whole WRC version two build and literally replicating everything, check this out. That is the wiper motor relocation to the passenger side floor. It's almost basically identical to what ProDrive has done with all of their rally cars, even as lately as Mark Higgins' um, Nürburgring car, the car that they took to Isle of Man. Nürburgring has the identical wiper motor bracket setup. And basically the idea behind this is you're lowering the car's center of gravity. Even though the wiper motor doesn't weigh very much, you're still bringing that weight down. Everything, the lower you can get it to the ground, the better the car is gonna handle. And basically how this works is the wiper motor is attached down here. And then there will be a shaft that attaches to the motor itself. The shaft will run up, up through the hole here in the cowl paneling, and then it attaches to the factory wiper linkage. So the factory wiper linkage still works the same way. You're just basically relocating the motor and how it, is, how it works. 
So now let's go underneath the car and I'll show you what I've done to the chassis underneath. All right, so coming underneath the car here, it's kind of tricky to get under here and film like this. I remember when I was filming the video of all the welding I was doing under here, I had the camera set up in all these weird spots just to get some good angles. And of course that footage is all gone, but let's do this again, shall we? So here's the underside where you can see the reinforcement plating for the lower control arms. And this is all solid, like I said, everything's nice and firm now. Comes up here, there's another piece here that bends up, and this is where the lower control arm attaches between this hole and this hole. So this is all gonna be completely solid now. You'll also see this plate here, and this is a plate that I welded all the way from the front frame rail, and you can see it goes all the way to the back of the car. And that serves as two reasons. Uh, number one, it deletes all of the holes that are underneath the frame right here, so all the holes are all gone. But I figured also if I ever bottom the car out for any reason, now I'm not bottoming it out on the factory frame rails. I've got some extra reinforcements here. And again, this is something that the WRC cars also had. Uh, so might as well add it to the build. Uh, also, again, you can see everything is all fully seam welded. All the seams where the frame rails attach from the front to the back, the transmission bracing, everything's all seam welded. And here you can see up here uh, what I did with the transmission tunnel. So you can see where the factory um, mounting hole for the shifter is. I kept that there because I wanted the rigidity for the new shifter. So the same thing goes with this plate here. This just reinforces everything, especially because it's gonna be a lot of stress with that taller shift lever with the sequential gearbox. And again, there was a, you can see these marks here. This is where the additional mount was from the factory where the rear shifter bushing would bolt into. I deleted that entire bracket as I didn't need it, but also needed the extra height, which is another reason why I raised the entire transmission tunnel. So that's why that's also done. Yeah, that's pretty much everything for under here. So let's uh, jump back out. All right, that's pretty much gonna do it for the WRC version two metal fab build update. Uh, as you can see, I've been busy, gotten a lot done. Pretty much everything is done in the welding department. I've got one or two small things left to do, and then after that is paint. Um, I haven't decided if I'm gonna film a video of me painting the car since I've already got one of those videos on the channel. And if that is something you guys wanna see, drop a message down below in the comments and I just might shoot a video of that. But after the car is fully painted, I can finally move into final assembly, put the X-Shift sequential gearbox, the engine, uh, subframe suspension brakes, get everything back into the car. And once everything's mostly in the car, not 100% together, I can finally start on the custom wiring loom. I can't wait to get started on that. I spent basically all of 2020 planning out the entire loom for the car and the Cosworth electronics package that's going in. So much planning and math goes into figuring out how to layer all of the different wires in the concentrically twisted loom. I'm also working with several Autosport connectors all throughout the car. So you've got to plan everything out. Those connectors go together a certain way and you have to have the arrangement of pins coincide with the wires in the loom. So again, this, I can't wait to share that with you guys. I'm gonna do a few videos on the entire wiring loom project. So stay tuned for that in the near future. But other than that, that's pretty much gonna do it for today. Thanks again, guys, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, hit the bell, or whatever everyone else on YouTube says. You know the drill. And also don't forget to follow me on my Instagram page. That is the best place to keep up to date with everything that's going on with the build. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video.